Aldis podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Ravi Mayuram. Ravi is Chief Technology Officer at Couchbase. Ravi, welcome to the show. Very nice to be here, JP. Thanks for inviting me. So, Ravi, let's start with yourself, please. Um, love to get a, a bit of background on your journey in tech from where you got started, some of the steps along the way, and, and what's led you to where you are today at Couchbase. Yeah, so I started my career as a very sort of lower level operating systems developer. I started working in the Valley for HP a long time ago. And uh, as my career advanced, I started moving in the stack of the software from operating systems to databases to uh, middleware systems to SaaS and uh, edge applications. It all came back full circle uh, here at Couchbase. We were able to bring all of that, you know, what we had built all those systems together to finally create what we have been able to achieve here at Couchbase. So from a simple software engineer to uh, sort of running engineering organizations has been my general journey. And in the process, I've seen small startups to large enterprises. It's a journey in building different systems and different platforms. Yeah, so thank you for sharing that. And you've already touched on a bit of uh, what Couchbase does. So if, if you wouldn't mind, give us the high level overview for Couchbase as a business. What is the mission of the organization? And then we could walk into some of the customer use cases and talk about the technology behind it all. Couchbase is a database platform offered as a service. So we are in the general category of DBAS. But the fundamental difference that we actually wanted to solve for here is that the classic databases, the relational databases as we call them, were built in the 70s and 80s based on the assumptions of the infrastructure that was available back then. So if you have to build a modern database, which is what is required for this next generation of applications that we are always building, what is it that this modern database has to offer was the question. And if you look, The fundamental assumptions that we had to make back in the 70s and 80s are no longer true. Memory is cheaper than what the disks used to cost them. Networks are way faster and way more ubiquitously available. They were not even available back when these single node architectures on which all these relational systems were stood upon. And then finally, the consumption model is all now basically as a service from the cloud to edge. These did not uh, exist back then. So the databases that we are using now are aging and they're showing their age. What we wanted to build was a, a database that is natively belongs in the cloud and offer elasticity, which is the biggest characteristics of moving to a cloud, is you are able to basically elastically scale up and down. So we built a database that is basically built for the cloud, as opposed to taking a database, which is basically built in the good old sort of assumptions and then putting it on the cloud. You're not really getting the benefits of what cloud fundamentally offers, which is elasticity. So we built a new database which consolidates multiple other stuff. I say this is more like a sort of to use a analogy, uh, not to overextend one, but this is more like a smartphone, the way we have built this database. A smart uh, phone is a device that is actually about 40 devices into one. You don't separately carry a GPS device, you don't carry a separate music playing device or a camera or a PDA, 40 odd devices in one. So it's, it's a sort of a consolidation of layers. Similarly, with Couchbase, you can do a classic key value, a full database query with transactions. You can do search, like the classic search that you typically do in a system like Google. You can do analytics, which is a, a huge area for gathering insights on operational data. And finally, you can stream this data. So these are the five characteristics brought into one platform, which is the Couchbase database, and it is available as a service from the cloud for you to consume elastically. So that way you get to pay only for what you're using. 
And so that's the platform. And in this, there are many database level innovations, which are sort of computer science in, in databases of science that is taught in higher education. So it's at that computer science level, we have had to solve some very difficult problems in distributed computing, in the query processing, in storage, in, in the network tiers. And so that's what we have basically done here to build a couch base. And why all this is basically to address the modern application needs, which is about flexibility of data. We always talk about structured and semi-structured data. We support both. It's about flexibility of using this platform. It's about being able to do uh, more data processing on the same data as opposed to moving the data around, which is what we have classically done. And of course, finally, we are building this database to become the platform in which you can do more and more of your AI and your supervised and unsupervised machine learnings and those models and how to apply them at near real time to get those insights in your transactional sort of applications. So that's the general journey of what we have built here at Couchbase. And uh, we have been in operation for about uh, nine odd years and we count some of the most mission critical and some of the the biggest brands in the world as our customers. So this journey has been both rewarding and from a standpoint of solving some of the toughest problems in the database field, but at the same time, seeing the application of this by some of the world's top brands to put that into action for their mission critical workloads. Yeah, and thank you for the detailed overview. It really helps visualize your position in the market. And you touched on it there. Couchbase is working with some of the world's largest enterprise who rely heavily on, on your technology as part of their core application, despite spending millions and millions on their own internal data operations. Can you give us some insight into a typical customer journey from where they're using Couchbase mm -hmm. to advance their modern data stack and then start to use some of that uh, modern technology as you referenced there with AI applications accessing real-time data and insights? Yes, no, great question because it's like you pointed out, it's a transformational journey that enterprises are undertaking and we are a very important sort of a tool in, in that journey for them. And it fundamentally starts with some of the smart enterprises coming to the conclusion that finally, what they have to solve is the data infrastructure because data is siloed. With the last 40 years, we have developed a sort of point solutions. And so because of that, there are, the data exists in silos. And when a customer has to experience their product or service, they are not able to bring all this data to bear at the moment of engagement. And so that's because these systems are sitting in, some data is sitting in mainframes, some data is sitting in old relational systems, some data is sitting in flat files some data sitting in more NoSQL systems, but they are not coming together. So there are a lot of 360 efforts that companies first undertake, which is basically, is there a way I can bring these disparate systems together and uh, be able to offer a single sort of view of the customer to both the enterprise and back to the customer in terms of all products and services that they use. So in this journey, the first step is how do I bring my multitude of data systems to a, a single view that I can offer to a customer? That's where first Couchbase makes the appearance, where they use Couchbase as that the engagement system or the, the first right through cache kind of a system where they are able to bring this multitude of backend systems into one place. And that is achieved because of a fundamental architecture differentiation in Couchbase, which is called schema flexibility. So without you having to rewrite your applications that are sitting in uh, your relation, uh, relational systems or mainframes, you can put Couchbase in front of them and you're able to now bring the data from this multitude of systems into one place and offer that to the customer. And now once, once you're able to do that, then their journey extends to the next phase. And this they do from the standpoint of performance and scale, because that's where many of these older systems suffer because they were built for the needs of data of a different generation altogether. They are not built for this global footprint and global presence and geo distribution of data. They are not able to achieve that with the old systems. So that's what brings Couchbase front and foremost in their adoption of this. Once it is there, now they start taking their old systems, they try to modernize that, re-platform those, so to say, by taking one microservice at a time from their old systems and moving them to Couchbase. So the journey becomes 
Uh, Couchbase is initially the system of engagement. From there, Couchbase becomes a system of truth because this is where you go to retrieve all the data for your operational needs. And then finally, Couchbase becomes a system of record, which is, means this is where your source of truth is fully recorded. And that's where you go for all your other backend systems like backup and restore and all your other sort of needs of the enterprise that you have for bookkeeping, auditing, your governance and all those requirements. That's where the system of record typically sits. So the journey is system of engagement to a system of to a system of uh, record. And enterprises, when they undertake this journey, they have to modernize on multiple fronts. First is I want to go from my on-prem and legacy systems to the cloud. And since we are built for the cloud and we have offered an on-ramp from on-prem to the cloud, it becomes a very logical place for them to start. And then they have to modernize from just not being just a connected classic web application. They also need the edge applications. So how do you extend this whole thing to the edge? We have our mobile capabilities, which makes it very easy for you to extend this application all the way to your edge mobile devices, IoT. And that's the journey on the other side of it, because more and more of this IoT is in the middle of the core enterprise architecture. So that's what sort of our customers go through. These are some of the very big brand names, and there are many customer testimonials available from our website for more details. I wouldn't want to pick one or two of our customers and offend the others. Oh, of so, course. Sure. Well, there, there's some, yeah, it, all it takes is a quick look at your website to see some of the most well-known uh, global brands, and many of them there. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. Ravi, I want to switch directions now and, mm -hmm. and look at the, the technology team and more specifically those who are working in and around what we would call the, the AI group. So your data scientists, your data engineers and machine mm -hmm. learning folks. Obviously, mm -hmm. your role oversees multiple teams and, and divisions. What's it like day to day to be part of the data team? What are some uh, projects? What's the, the, the environment like and the overall culture there? Yes, I think uh, these are very exciting times to be in the space of data because there's a lot of innovation, really core innovations that's happening. If you ask on a, any given day, I could be having conversations with uh, sort of low level storage engineers because we're building a new storage engine and these are not built that often, uh, which involves some deep discussions in areas like skip lists and lock structured merge and lock structured storage. These are all innovations in the deep in, in, in the storage areas. So there are people if they are interested in storage and deeper bits and bytes level because they are exciting. Actually, I started my career at the device driver level writing for the HP Unix operating system. So people who are interested in that kind of stuff, there is a class of people working on those side of problems. There are people who are working on distributed computing problems, which is the distributed platform on which Couchbase actually operates, which allows you to scale horizontally, as we call it. So distributed systems is another major area where you're talking about consistency, what uh, consistency mechanisms and protocols that we use in uh, achieving those consistency when you have to bring multitudes of nodes together and offer one single view of the whole cluster or system. So uh, cluster based computing and the infrastructure for it is another area where people are working on. People are working on query engines, which is an area where hundreds of PhDs have been awarded. So it's a very well-known area of query optimization in terms of data, because since you are going to have this data sitting on hundreds and thousands of servers, how do you move this data between this multitude of systems? And then edge, there are people who are thinking in terms of edge and replication of data, which is a, a pretty involved science in itself. And of course, like you pointed out, there are people who are thinking in terms of the AI machine learning. What is the data infrastructure that is required for AI? So that's the level of the thinking here. Not so much of building what is the next learning model. That's something that is an application which is built on top of a database. But we are thinking about what are the data problems that require solving because currently the AI space is at the end of the day, AI is code and data. The code, which is algorithm, which is running on top of some data. Currently, most of the thinking is on how to optimize this algorithm and you're assuming that the data is sort of fixed. 
the next evolution is basically going to be where more will be the data will be constantly changed with fixing your algorithm if you will not that it will be entirely fixed but there will be less you will try to achieve less by just tweaking and tuning the algorithm and more by using massive amounts of data just to give you an example the human intelligence evolved over millions of years because we finally arrived at this you know nice little algorithm which says if it looks like tiger run and before we came to that what happened was you know i'm sure a multitude of our four forefathers got eaten or mauled by this tiger because they were standing there trying to figure out i mean is it is a tiger or is it a pussy cat can it outrun me does it have the, the claws and fangs which can actually hurt me so the intelligence the is basically is gathering data and then you know tuning the algorithm on top of it so it took a while but nowadays systems you just have to teach the system how to play go and it will play, play that game millions of times and then arrive at the, what the right algorithm is and so eventually it can even beat the sort of human champions in this game so this is deep learning reinforcement learning what's happening really is here is that machines are generating the data and that data constantly changes our legacy database systems couldn't adapt to this so well because it's called rigid schema in the in the database world so flexible schema is what really allows you to sort of keep expanding your sort of data and that helps you fine tune the algorithm to say that okay this is finally more data and a concise algorithm always beats a more elaborate algorithm on less data is, is the con con conventional wisdom in these sort of uh, fields of ai and data science so we have to move to that where it is data centric or more like data driven that's the set of problems we are solving here so that's another class of people who are thinking through those problems and seeing how we can basically enhance the data infrastructure we can get to that phase because how, how is that move going to affect couchbase day to day yes. and when you look ahead for the next few years particular the mm -hmm. the team that you're going to need to grow and evolve uh, with it yes. becoming more reliant on modern ai as a platform how is that going to change and and looking ahead what are you personally excited about for the the next phase of couchbase ai is something that is uh, going to sort of we already are seeing it. it's going to have a societal impact and so that means all of us will be impacted in some way and we just have to uh, adapt to that change so to say as just as an example you know until very recently we used to drive the car and there will be driver assistance systems which will help enable you to avoid a collision or blind spot detection and cruise control and stuff like that it's flipped on its head now to where the cars pretty much drive themselves and humans are only required to supervise and take evasive action so machines are generating the data and humans are supervising them as opposed to previously the humans were actually doing the work and machines were only assisting them so to say so in this world the it's got deep impact and deep uh, relevance to databases because these are the systems that in which finally all this data that you are actually collecting is eventually going to be stored analyzed and then finally put to use the intelligence that you gather out of that so our future evolution in sort of uh, couch space is going to be at two levels one is to make databases themselves become autonomous just like the way a car is now driving itself and humans are required to supervise that only databases typically are notorious to require very qualified skills dbas and so many other sort of trained resources to run this thing has to get to a point of where it self heals self manages self scales a whole bunch of autonomous characteristics it has to evolve that so that's one sort of vector in which we would be innovating and thinking and the people will be working on that the second is with all this new sort of reinforced and deep learning that is happening how to make training models easy to run from databases how to make them scale and perform and how to make this new life cycle of application development easy for developers because the applications we are developing in the past did not have ai right in the middle of it now it will require that that you have to you'll be using many ai techniques in the middle of your application to generate a, a, any application or application widgets that you'll be developing will have ai built into them so in this new life cycle of application the database will play a very central role in because that's where the data and the, the algorithm that is firing on the data both both will be paramount to you actually achieving the, the, the insights that you want to bring number two and doing that consistently so consistency is a huge problem in the whole 
AI sort of space and consistency and explainability. These are the big topics where there is both academic as well as industry oriented research going on. And those are the areas where some of our engineers would be working on as we define this to make uh, this database more and more easy for people to use in this, like you mentioned, AI driven world. Final question for me, Ravi. You play a pivotal role in the growth of the overall technology team at Couchbase, and I know you're heavily involved in the the recruitment and hiring strategy for the technical team. When you're sat with data engineers or or data scientists and you're interviewing them as candidates, Mm -hmm. what is it that you tell them about the work and the environment at Couchbase that gets them interested in in you guys over some of the other great opportunities available to them? Right. I think the kinds of candidates I meet and talk, they are fundamentally very smart people. They have specialized in an area of computer science, which requires a deep understanding of both computer science and mathematics so that you can apply them in this area of data science and AI and machine learning and these sort of areas. So what they're actually looking for is a compelling mission that they can apply their science and their skills to. And so our conversations may basically, though at a certain level, it's at, at skill and expertise. But many a times when I talk to them, it's about painting that vision of in this world where machines are generating more data, what does it mean to database? Can you even administer a database which is going to have hundreds and thousands of petabytes of data? Is it even possible to manage such systems using human expertise? Shouldn't machines help with that? How are machines going to help? And that's a class of problems we need to solve. Second is more synthetic data that we actually have to generate to model many of these sort of algorithms. And how are we going to build a system which allows you to try multiple sets of synthetic data and and refine your your model, so to say, and, and find the applicability for it for the applications to use. So it's in that that we have the conversations about how the database as an area is pivotal to, to, to enable this modern class of applications to be developed. Like someone said, if you want to inspire someone to build a, a great boat, do not teach them you know, carpentry, how to nail or how to put the planks together. Show them the dream of what that far off land, the paradise that they can sail to, and they will figure out how to build the boat. So most of my conversation is about what would be that compelling worldview where we would be, we would have solved some of the tough problems which are not yet being solved and how they can help solve those problems. And that's what inspires people to come together. We have a very creative and very driven set of engineers here and what they are able to achieve what they're able to build surprised me and I'm always thankful for what all they bring to the table. And I think it's the sharing of the vision and the compelling nature of it that brings some of these smartest cookies together to go build something which all of us have individually not imagined, but together we're able to work and build that. Ravi, thank you so much for for coming on today and talking to us. I really appreciate you uh, going into such detail about Couchbase and its journey, how you're working with such incredible enterprise partners, but also the environment and the culture. And it sounds like it's a fun place to work now and it's going to remain a fun place for the years to come. So we wish you, the team and everyone at Couchbase, the best of luck in the years ahead. Thank you so much, JP. It was fun having this conversation with you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com, to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.